Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Women Empowerment Series today with me, Farisha, and I'm delighted to have a very special guest with me, is Siti Aziz. Hi Siti, how are you? Hi, how are you Farisha? Thank you for having me here. It's wonderful to have you in Women Empowerment Series. And this is a series where I interview amazing and wonderful ladies in Malaysia. So Siti, can you tell us more about yourself? Sure. As you know me, Farisha, you know, I there is not one word that I can put on to describe myself. So I'm an avid believer of multi-potentiality. So what that means is that you need to have a lot of passions and you're a beginner in a lot of things that you do. So aside that, I'm also on a mission to beat my late granddad's record in learning languages. <laughs> so I'm trying to conquer 10 languages fluent in speaking, hearing, listening, writing, and everything, hopefully. Um, and, you know, and there's a sort of... Um, feeling where you know um you have to not be afraid of making mistakes and there's a lot of humility in that and i believe that you know as as women or as anyone in fact um when you learn something you're you're a beginner or something and the more you learn the more you don't know you know like the dunning kruger effect and yeah that, that's a little bit um of the quirky side of me <laughs> Okay, so Siti, can you tell us more about the challenges that you face in your career and how do you overcome it? How do you overcome those challenges? Right, I believe this might relate to some people. So I work in a corporate world uh, where, you know, um, you are literally um, a speck of dust. <laughs> so to say. Um, so my biggest challenge I would like to share, and this is a very personal sharing, I hope it will benefit a lot of you out there. So it was on 2019. So this was the period where I changed transition into a different kind of business. So it was a different ball game. It totally invalidate everything that I've learned. So again, like I said, lifelong learning, you know, you're a beginner again, day one. And, you know, at this time, um, you know, I was um, doing my best and as a woman you know you you sometimes struggle to position your ideas and sometimes people put you down more often than not actually so this year I, I struggle and I trudge through and I ended up having two successful overseas missions for my company um, in the in the in the scope of stakeholder management international and you know you might think that this has a very happy ending to it but actually it didn't you know you can't please everyone so in the end i did not get a very good performance rating for that year and i believe it was a little bit of an unfair judgment but then again it teaches me you know the value of you know nobody can take that experience away from you so you know like it or not in life you will fail that is a sure thing and you just have to learn how to rebound and rebound stronger and faster how to bounce back yeah get back up and bounce back yes mm -hmm. resilience exactly resilience exactly and just that, that. Really don't give up yes and that is one of the trait of leadership resilient you've got to be resilient and you've got to be brave to stand back up and keep moving forward yeah Totally. And if I, if I can add, actually, it's also, you have to be so grounded, you have to know yourself very well, because the, a lot of people out there, they are not everyone wants to uplift you, not everyone thinks highly of you, or sometimes people are insecure themselves. And this is not um, me telling people that, you know, we should just um, ignore other people's what they say about us. No, feedbacks are good. But you have to know which one are you know to be taken with a pinch of salt mm -hmm. so that you don't actually destroy your own confidence and you just go ahead surround yourself with people who uplifts you and sometimes it's hard to find people who uplifts you so you be the one who uplifts others first yes and we have to be our own cheerleader too we have to love ourselves definitely that is how we go get farisha yes everyone everyone go ct too everyone have to you know uplift themselves and get back up after a difficult situation because Definitely. i believe everyone has gone through you know struggles mm -hmm. 
hardship, difficult situation, uh, even myself. So how do how do you deal with difficult situation? Is your mind, your mindset. Definitely. Your mindset. So definitely. It's you, all in there. Yeah, you just bounce back. And now for the next question, what does woman empowerment means to you in your own words? Yeah, a lot of things have been said about woman empowerment. So I'll tell you what it doesn't mean to me. Okay, so the first one is superficial good looks or number two, how much money you make or you have in your bank account or number three, you know, all these reaching gender parity in terms of materialistic values like your salary having big cars big houses how many square meters you have in your house so it's not all that it's not all that at least for me so it's more for me on cultivating a genuine voice i find that for women we have a lot of negative self-talk you know we we are the biggest critic to ourselves and and that's the thing you know so the more deeper you do your soul searching and i'm speaking from my own experience and i haven't figured it out yet at 30 years old so it's okay it's a journey but it's all about you know using this female sensibility you know this added awareness this emotional quotient to actually lead or run the world so beyonce would say it you know to 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 use your energy you know the, your your authentic voice to be perspective purposeful to others so and i and i like to share a story on this um parisha if you don't mind I, i'm not sure if you've heard of it but it's of the uh, michelle obama and barack obama you know the ex-president of the united states so there was one time they were on a tour and of course they go on a lot of tours and there was a guy who actually approached them and he was a local business owner in that state so he said i'd love to host you both for dinner and then when they went to the restaurant, the guy actually asked for a private, um, you know, session uh, or talk, a small talk with the first lady, the ex first lady, Michelle Obama. And then Obama was wondering, hmm, what is it that, uh, you know, they have between them? And he found out that actually the guy was, you know, during their teenagers, they, he was so in love with Michelle Obama. So, you know, and then so this is this is the best part which i want to take away um i want this to be the takeaway so obama said so if you had married him then you would now be the owner of this lovely pizza restaurant and you know what's the best part michelle obama replied mm -mm, nah -uh. <laughs> if i had married him he would now be the president of the united states bam so this is what I think women empowerment should be. It's the self-belief, you know, you, you, you have to cultivate and I'm still trying to cultivate this in myself, you know, and in the end you use this energy, as I mentioned, for the betterment of your society. And we really have to take the action now and move beyond the rhetoric. Next question. Who are the women leaders that you admire in Malaysia and internationally? I love this question because I did, I had, I had a trouble, I, you know, it was difficult for me to answer, <laughs> but, you know, I want to give an answer that might sound cliche, but I really admire the everyday you and me. I really do. Like I find in all the ladies, I speak to a lot of leaders, world leaders or, you know, international um, business women. And also you, for example, Farisha, for example, I really love that you are so good at hosting. And I find that it's something that I could emulate, you know, this gusto in you that you just do it. So it's, it's the everyday you and me, it's, it's definitely something to look up to. But if you if you like me to to name someone, and I would say uh, Tanshri uh, Zeti Akhtar, because nobody else could say that I signed the ringgit yeah. bills, <laughs> that would be okay. And how about internationally? 
for international, the first lady that came to mind is Angela Merkel. So she led Germany for 15 years, you know, without any scandals. She actually had, if I'm not mistaken, six minutes straight of standing ovation. You know, you, you don't get that. And the second lady that came to mind is definitely Jacinda Ardern. You know, the, the way she handled the Christchurch mm. crisis is full of passion. It's, it embodies how a woman leader should be. And she don't has, you think so? Yeah. And the third one, the last but not least, is she has empathy and heart. That's yeah, what definitely. And the last but not least yeah. is Christine Lagarde. World Bank. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. That's what I'm talking about. And that's the, the leadership quality that a lady should um, you know, bring to the table. Yeah, so Christine Lagarde, she was uh, the leader of the IMF Bank, but now she's currently leading the European Central Bank. And she is the world leader for fiscal policies. And she is very, very loud or very, you know, adamant about having very women vocal. parity, gender parity. Yes, very vocal about this. So I love it. You should listen to her because she would just go straight up to a leader of a country and says, or a leader of a big organization and says, look, in your table, I don't see any women. She would go and literally, you know, zass people like that. So I, I really admire her. She would just speak out. Yeah. Okay. And the last question uh, for today, what is your advice for the young generation, for the Gen Z millennials? Definitely, you know, enjoy yourself. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay, so um, if I were to talk to my younger self, because I'm not too sure how young people are nowadays, they probably have different priorities. But if I were to put myself in their shoe, I would tell myself to not just build on substance, meaning that not just, you know, be so, yes, of course, you have to build your capability, you have to get your degree, you have to get the best marks possible, whatever is possible for you, but also you have to build on the even me, and, you know, I started out quite late to have this kind of awareness, and I find that that is the, the you know, one one straight highway for women to actually get that position in, in leadership, you know, to have your, your true purpose coming out, your true, as we say, the Japanese word ikigai, the purpose, the true calling, and only this way you can find your true voice and harness this potential and energy. So I only have three words for, for them. Be bold, be brave, and be unapologetic. Okay, Siti, those are wise words coming from Siti Aziz. Yeah, be bold, be brave, and be unapologetic. Yes, okay. definitely. And do you have any last advice that you want to share to our viewers today? Well, enjoy the journey. It's all right. Sometimes you feel overwhelmed. You, If you want to cry, you want to release your it's okay to be disappointed but you know don't stay there you have if you need help just say it like don't be don't be afraid you know people talk about mental health nowadays for example don't be afraid to ask for help go for counseling get all the help you need and go back stronger and rock the world Okay, thank you so much, Siti, for sharing your wisdom and also your advice with the viewers. And for those of you out there who are watching this, I hope that you are inspired and also motivated by the sharing session today with Siti Aziz. Until then, stay safe, take care, bye. Bye, take care. Bye.